That one's got practice written on it. Where have you been stealing them? All right, I'm Craig, and this is Diary of an Angry Scottish Golfer. This is a weekly YouTube video series that I do that just tracks my progress trying to get better at golf in all sorts of manners of ways. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy golf YouTube stuff, please consider subscribing because that would be really lovely. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, I can monetize the channel and all money that's generated through this channel will be donated to a Spanish rescue dog charity called All Spain Rescue Dogs. So basically, if you're subscribing, you're doing your bit for charity, which is really lovely. This week's video is part two of my performance session with Peter Whiteford, former European Tour Pro. Really enjoyed the session. Last week's video, I'm gonna put a link to that up there. If you've not watched it yet, definitely check that out. A lot of really good bits of information from Peter. Really knowledgeable guy. Um, there's a lot more knowledge in this video and the one coming next week as well. So without further ado, I'll let you guys crack on and watch it. And yeah, thanks for watching and all that. I'm gonna go and watch some Netflix. Cheery. Yeah, I mean, that's where you're aiming. That is, that is so far right you're aiming. So the only way for you to hit fairway there was to have a pull hook, not just a hook. Does that make sense? Right, you're straight downwind here, so the least, I mean, the most right you want to start this is at the chimneys. Yeah, but you're straight downwind, the ball funnels straight downwind. You're not going to be able to hook it into the wind, absolutely, you can move it more, but downwind, the ball, because the spin on the ball, it's not going to go as, it's not going to move as much. It goes straight downwind. Mm -hmm. Healy, a bit middle of fairway. Do you never wear a glove? Forget to put it on before shot. You forget to put it on. I generally couldn't hit a ball without a glove. I had to buy golf balls last week for the first time in my life. Oh, yeah? The little pills are quite expensive, aren't they? I'm seeing the golf courses are a whole different light. Working out away from all the trouble. <laughs> Holy shit, this is offline. So give me your robotic thought process for this one. You got 167. Yep. Seven iron goes 170. Yeah, exactly. So seven iron's gonna fly three yards too far. I feel ridiculous now, <laughs> but yeah. Have you taken the wind into consideration? Yeah, it's downwind. Yeah. How far does the net go? 166. And you got how far? 167. <laughs> Come on, Brain. I don't think I can get an 8 there. Oh, it's Just hit an 8, for Christ's sake. I mean... Have you ever had your caddy say that? Shit? Yeah, oh. <laughs> many caddy have said many a thing to me. <laughs> like, it's downwind. It's an 8 iron all day long. I know it's uphill, but there's, there's enough wind to be more than cancelling out the uphill. If it doesn't reach, I'll be amazed. Yep. Maybe we just need a caddy. I mean, I don't understand why you think it wouldn't go further downwind. It's almost like you're... You know the ball goes further downwind, right? <laughs> and you know it goes shorter into the wind. Yeah. Right? Spin and wind and stuff, it's cool. So. I realise the modern game, you don't hit it quite as high and quite as low as you used to because the ball doesn't spin quite as much, but you still need to control those trajectories a wee bit. That's plenty. It's past the, past the flag. My defence. I wasn't going to hit a hard seven. You've got no defence there, sorry. Zero. For a man that's already telling me he basically just hits full shots all the time, well, that's all I've seen practically, to all of a sudden just say, ah, I'll just take back edge, that'll be fine. I mean, that was just, it was eight iron all day. And the fact you're playing off two is, I mean, your brain, your brain in competition has got to be pretty bad for that, considering how you hit it. That's a compliment. <laughs> in case you're wondering. Very good. Nice. Very good. So in general, if you were to take five, six, seven, eight yards off a, a seven iron, for example, how would you do it? In fact, I'm going to watch you do it here, never mind. I'm going to, no, I want to watch you do it here. We'll see it here. It's only 133, so, I mean, yes, you probably could fly it all the way to the flag and stun it, but really, realistically speaking, you're talking flying it at least five short and letting it release a wee bit, if you can. So what's your 133 club? 
Right, you're gonna, but if you hit a full pitch, you you'll fly long. Agreed? I was low, it landed last time. So, if you hit this field, you fly the green. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think if I hit it, you fly the Right, you do what you do. That wasn't meant to sound like a dick. No, 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 I'm like, so you know you hit that club 130. I'm pretty sure. It looks to me like it's at least three down. Right, so that makes it a 130 shot downwind. Yeah? Yeah, but that's, so that's perfect for me then. That's my fault. No, that's 130 downwind, which is then making it play back down to about a 120. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that this would be about a 125 shot. But you're just going with it. And I know if you go more than three big, you're, well, it looks like it with a flag. The way I, like, I don't, I don't think I'm good enough for that, to, those Why things to matter. I Why? Go sure. The way I think is 130, one, yep, close enough, doesn't matter. <laughs> Genuinely, I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny, I'm being right. serious. That's fine. My thoughts were, uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, yeah, it's downwind and stuff, but it'll get in the ballpark. I'm not good enough for it to go to the extra two yards and that. Okay. Is what I thought. So, I'm just so you're just going full wedge? Full wedge, yeah. I'm so I reckon it'll go long. I speed it up a little bit high by accident, and I think that's <laughs> <laughs> Nice to add in a wee variable, just keep it interesting. Yeah, yeah, still in bounds. Yeah, yeah, it's big, yeah. Right, same club, and it's soft this time. Yes. You know it's too much club now, right? So let's manufacture a shot a little bit. Down the shaft narrow stance, that'll take five yards off it without doing anything else. Think of like a windmill, right? So the middle of the windmill is going at 20 mile an hour, and the tips are going at 120. Right, so if you simply Go down the shaft and narrow your stance, then the windmill's shorter, isn't it? Does that make sense? Yeah. So just if you think of it in those terms, the other I mean there's other ways to do it. You can get a bit a bit narrower. Narrower to narrow more phone boxy swing that'll narrow it up again rather than the wood. There's all these things you can do to make it shorter, but just take some distance off it. You hit a wedge as well. Yeah. I mean I could comfortably carry this green with a wedge, but I'm going way down the shaft and I'm gonna try and put a little bit of cut spin on it to take a bit more off again. Didn't cut it very much. <sighs> yes, it's your only chance at a perfect lie. It's what they like. It, people say that, and but also you got to remember, tees are quite sandy areas, so that's where the green keepers. I mean, it's not like a fairway, is it? We repaired a lot, so yes, I would pick it up. So down the shaft, narrow stance. Yeah, just keep the balance. Swing within yourself. Keep the balance. Same, same attack. Perfect. See, already you've taken 15 yards off that club, haven't you? Yeah. And you've not had to dolly it. No. Certain, certain guys can dolly it and be good at it. So you'll get like a, and I have no idea, but I would imagine a Justin Thomas, for example, he looks like he just slows everything down to take five yards or 10 yards off it. When I do that, or most people do that, some of you will stay fast and some of you will slow down. Like my legs will stop, my arms will keep going and I'll hit a long left. Or, or vice versa, my arms will slow down, it's hard to marry it up for me. So I need to be a bit more still hitting it, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's why I don't like taking stuff off it. But you can, like, you but I still look like I hit mine relatively hard. Oh, yeah. But you can just change, look, if I told you to chop across it a bit, it's taking distance off it. I told you to go down the shaft, it's taking distance off it. The one thing you will get is it will take out the sky as well a little. So. Yeah, so the lower it comes in, the less the air's under it, so it's going to be flying less distance as well. So just by knocking it down a wee bit, which happens when you go down the shaft, yeah? So you don't actually have to think about any of these things, it just happens. Are you still committed to that? The other, first one's actually not as bad as it looks, but... Playing first or second? Yeah, whatever you like. Let's see your chips. Let's, let me see your chipping. <laughs> A terrible noise! Well played. I can't hit them today for some reason. Getting tired, it's a long day for a woman like me. Was it where do you want to start it? You want to start at right edge? Where do you think you started it? But did you just think you pulled it or do you know you pulled it? Now again, you might have, for all you know, started that pretty much bang on. It's just moved really early. But you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm, gonna, I'm definitely fading this. Right, I'm gonna talk you through how I'm gonna make sure that's not gonna happen, right? This is probably not gonna work, but this is what, this is how to, to work in a plan B, we'll call it, right? So I know that I'm struggling with the pools, right? So then I've got to, anyway, I felt, I've got to make sure, because I can't be bothered playing a draw, I want to make sure that I'm going to create a fade. So my practice swings and everything I'm thinking about here is how am I going to create a fade. Make sense? Right, so it's not, I'm not looking for my nice golf swing. I just want to get someone in play. And then hope it works. Should work. Jesus, might be a pro. There you go. Yeah. The dev ring, I need to make sure it wasn't going to happen. There's not a test on this one, I can just do what I want. No, but you need to be left of those cocks of trees on the right there, if you know what I mean. Those wall of trees? I don't know, I've heard that phrase before. Is there no cocks of trees? I think that's from porn. <laughs> Right, so you see the barn on the left, the wee hut thing? In the distance, the blue thing? No, the, oh, wee, the wee one, yeah. Yeah, in between that and the green. The green side bunker on the left. Yeah. I was just thinking that the green thing was not out, but if this is into the left, this could be. Well, don't go right, you don't want to miss this right. So ideally, you don't want to start the ball in trouble ever, agreed? Try and square up the flight for me. How are you going to do it? You're certainly going to do it with a practice swing first, don't you? Oh, Unless you're just going to ignore everything I say. No. Right, so really work at it to make sure you don't hook it. Square up the flight for your life, it's not got to hook. Oh god. <laughs> I mean if I didn't go left. <laughs> Get another one. Right, number one, so we've said we're trying to square up your flight and you're still aimed right. Yeah. So even if you'd squared that up, you were still in the tree. Square out the flight. I'm not even looking for a slice. I just want less of a hook. I don't want it starting right at those trees. So what are you going to try this time? No, why? Clear didn't work. So what are you going to adjust? No, no. Wait, stop. Because you've got to adjust something. It's just that's just buying a lottery ticket, isn't it? Start it down at that barn. That barn there. Yeah. Or just right that if you want. I'll give you a little bit of a buffer. Good. It's a good bad one though. What in what world was that horrific? You achieved what you asked, what you set out to achieve without a strike. It just seems you're aiming more and more right and you're swinging it nicely. I can tell you're swinging it nicely because your irons are good and the driver actually has been really good the first few holes but you just seem to be edging more and more to the right. Whether that's because you're trying to rip more of a hook to get more distance or you're just doing it because you don't know you're doing it. You can't have a short, it spins back. So it's on a little plateau. Part of the green, yeah. You can see that from here. So short's going to come back. Again, you're not a machine. You might get it wrong. But so what's your plan on the shot? Just try to hit it lower. How are you going to hit it lower? Back foot a little bit, and I just really concentrate. So you're just doing that same one swing thought, and just putting the you're just addressing it slightly different, yeah. yeah. Okay. Get up. Get up. Front club. Right. Oh, you're eight, eight yards short. There's only... No, that's a very hard part from there. You just. You did. You hit that. You committed to that perfectly. Just do that with an eight iron. Like I said, it's an eight iron. I'll do. Oh, did you think it was an eight, not an iron? Yeah, yeah. Just go down the shaft of hair, like you did in the par three in the last hole. Still commit to it. That's a golf shot. It's got a buffer there now because you've hit the right club. You're making life hard. The harder you hit things, the more it's into the wind, the more it's going to get buffeted. And the more down the shaft you go, the lower it comes in trajectory. It's just easier. Yeah, do you know what? It wasn't, yeah, it was torture at times, but it's not as slow as what you think. It depends what group you're in, I suppose. It's, it's when somebody's not ready to play, that's when it's slow. And most of the guys are slow on the greens more than anything else. Well, your, your club member doesn't really read putts from every angle. I mean, we do it in one putt every three holes. Two guys are doing it every putt, regardless. But right, so yeah, for example, I've got 107 here, right? I'll hit my gap wedge 115, but there's no way I'm hitting gap wedge. 
number one if it gets there, which I could if I trapped it, and I could make it get there if I hooked it, which again is going to roll away from the flag. Um, and number two, it's going to spin like wind blade as well. So I need to. It's just too high tariff, so just chip away. It just makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? Because you've done the yardage route for so long, do you not like lasers? I do, but it's pointless unless I know where the flag is. Because your shot, for example, there, if it was a flat green middle of St Andrews, it was probably all right, your shot. It would just be five yards short, really. But because it, because there's tiers, you were, you know, you got that wrong quite a bit. That's the difference between, you know, if I come up three yards short here, I know it's, it's back to where your ball is. Do you know what I mean? So I've got, you know, what, what did I say my number was? I've even forgotten, 107. So I've realistically got to be looking at flying this between the 107 and 110. That's my, you know, the flag number is not always your number. It's where you actually want to pitch it. But you sound like you're just going with, well, you don't need, you just go with the vicinity half the time. But, but you need to get away from that. You need to learn how to play half shots. You could be the best six iron range player in the world, right? Off a flat lie, no wind, straight in the range, crap man there, everything. Brilliant, but you never get that in the golf course. You never, you've not had once where you've had a perfect number for your club, have you? You're always taking taking someone off or adding someone on. What did I say? 107. Oh, go! That's back down it. Stay. Dragged it, but at least it's pin high. It's awful, but it's pin high. It's amazing if you can get pin high. You don't have to play that well. You get decent chances. Who is this tiger you talk about? Tiger <laughs> is he all right? But I just mean if you get it right, it's unbelievable. I've just had a brutal golf shot. You've hit, like I said, on the flag, way better than mine. But I've got a birdie putt and you've got a chance of three putting. Two lovely golf shots you've hit. One you've got a birdie chance, another one, to be honest, there's way more chance you're going to three putt it than one putt it, obviously. But I'd say there's about a 40% chance you'll three putt it. 30%, we'll go with 30% chance. Even a good putter is gonna, gonna three putt that every once in a while. Even a good putter will three putt that once in a while. That one's got practice written on it. Where have you been stealing them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Lovely job, Lip. Your putting's nice. Nope. Yes, you should be playing off scratch. There's no department of the game that is not ability to play off scratch apart from the brain. Well, you see the flag on the left then? So it's a wee short par four. Two iron will be enough bat. If you miss it left, it's dead. I know it's not that dead, but I'm telling you it's dead just because I want to see what shot you hit. I just want to put something in the brain. It's only two, well, it's three, three sixteen to the middle. So you're only talking flags in the front. Take a... <laughs> Why? You want to play at your strengths. So every two on your fit so far has been pretty pure, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, I just think. It's about no. I just, I guess. I mean, I've hit them all right. Yeah. Well, tell me when you hit bad. I've drop kicked a few. Where? I can't remember. I don't know what holes are, but, but I've definitely hit a couple of squares here. But I just think it's safer to hit five on there. We've only got 116 yards in. Fine. If you, if I was to say to you, right, I'll give you five birdies tomorrow, you'd be, you'd be quite comfy at getting round and under par, wouldn't you? Right. So for the, for the remaining so many holes, you, you're allowed two or three bogeys, two or three mistakes, right, or two or three you going mental. But if you only make one birdie, then oh, it's tough to stay under par, isn't it? So if you get a chance of making birdie, it's a case of the way I want you to look at a hole is what's the easiest way of making birdie here, and then weigh up the risk and reward. That's the way I would look at golf, right? So obviously the easiest way here is two iron on the green, right? Risk and reward, even though I'm not hitting many fades at the moment, a fades risk because I'm starting in trouble. So I'm going to have to draw the two iron. So then have I, have I got that shot or have I not got that shot? And there's a trouble if it doesn't draw. It's just got two iron written all over it. I mean, if I stay right, it's fine. There is no trouble up there. Does it make sense? So for me, the risk's worth it. If I pull it off and make bird deck, if I don't quite, I can still get a par, but as long as it doesn't go left. So I'll try and block off the left side by aiming miles up the right. Well, miles more than I would normally do it. 
no, not quite as far right as you'd maybe go, but then I can rip the hands at it and it shouldn't, shouldn't go too far left. Ow, oh, too much chat, Peter. Ah, oh, it's pathetic, but it's fine. Too much chat, but anyway. That's like the line for your five iron or whatever you're hitting. You got the two iron now? Yes. Right. So the steps is realistic where you want to bounce it, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so just draw it. Start it right. Try and draw it back to that point. You know you've got the draw in the bag, but make it draw. Don't just expect it to draw. Okay. Yeah? That was just my normal shape to draw. I was just going to concentrate my elbow on it. Right, well, that's fine. Okay, that's fine for now. It would, I'm pretty confident that it'll draw. If I hit anywhere near as good, it'll draw. Fine. Yeah, straight down wind. That's what happens. Yeah. You've got to work it harder to shape it down, down wind. And I know you're kind of a, just a pick up and aim and fire type guy with a normal swing, but even if it's a case of like, try and flight it for you five yards higher, one shot. Nobody has to know you're doing it. I'm not talking hit it to the moon or five yards lower. That'll just be enough to focus the brain into doing something and not worrying about the consequences. Does that make sense? I'm not asking you to do Bubba Watsons of aiming 80 and slicing them, but just just affect the trajectory and it'll concentrate your brain enough. I wrote a rubbish little article, right? you can see this online, right? It's, it's brutal. But, um, and it's basically the equation of, uh, so you get white balls and black balls or whatever and all this stuff. And if I can fill my, fill my brain with enough black balls and enough sort of thoughts on what I'm trying to achieve, then the sort of, if the white balls were the bad thoughts, if you like, there's, there's not enough room for them to affect me. <laughs> you know, even if it was, it could be something simple, just, Feeling like you're, you're a high finish, a low finish, a low exit, a high exit, a left exit, a right exit. Something that will focus you into something that you've got to go and achieve. Rather than just trying to put a pretty swing in it. You know, under the cost, if I had to hit a fairway, I, I'm always sort of a, a, a down the grip and punch the driver type thing. It used to be a punch slice, now it's a bit more of a punch draw, full drop. But, um, you've got to find a safe shot because not all, you hardly ever have your A game. Everyone could play golf with their A game. That's not hard. It's playing golf with your B game that's impressive to, to me. That's what the top boys in the world are the best at, aren't they? They still win with their B games. Yeah, we should have ripped those around the corner a bit better, but hey-ho. I mean, you've got a doozy of a lie there. But the first thing, again, I would do in any short game, or any shot at all, because I've already talked about it with the driver, is that, so I get up to the ball and just sort of feel what, kind of, what the possibilities are. I put my laser. Why? Please don't use your laser. I mean, I could throw it in the green left-handed. You're not telling me you've got a 27-yard swing, have you? Hip to hip, 25. You've not got 20, so what's your How'd you get 27? I just, I'm happy with 25. So I'm, not, right. I'm, not, I'm not joking, I'm not trying to insist. Right, so, again, the first thing I would do, like I was sort of sorry, explaining, the first thing I would do is go like that and feel, right, okay, I mean, I can get underneath that ball, or, oops, or I, can, or I can hit it low, I can do whatever I want from that line. Right, so then I would look at what shot's available and go with that. So whether it's a low spinny, spinny one or a high soft one, and just feel it in. You've got the technique, I've seen your technique. I don't fuck about with any, ever fuck about with trajectories. Because and honestly, I just don't think I'm good enough to do that. So. Lies. I'm being serious, no, I'm being 100% serious. Okay, right, okay. So where do you want it, where do you want this? You want this landing short of the flag, left of it, right of it? Short right, yeah. Short right. So rolling away from the flag as it hits the green. Is that not forward? No. Like the bunker there is pushing it down, no? Wind's off the left, but any chance it's going to... Oh, right, okay, well that's even easier then, so just left it. Yep. I fucking don't even know where to start, I don't know how far it is. <laughs> You're joking me. Joking. Right, take some practice swings, pretend there's a ball there. Right, if you hit that, it'll come up probably about just okay. Just about okay, feel it like that. Just do that. Lovely. So far, your best shot. Very good. Is my practice swing a, a rehearsal of what I'm trying to do? Does that make sense? So it depends how hard I want to hit this, and then I found a shot or there which is a bit higher, which is a bit better for me. Slightly cut across it. There I go. Got lucky. Didn't hit it hard enough. 
but you can mess up. Your practice swing is your rehearsal for the shot. Does that make sense? And you know when you're hitting those practice swings, you can envisage where the ball's going to go after that swing. Birdie time. The read you gave yourself was, you lined the putter up there, and then you batted it on that. It was just a misread. It's basically, it basically a left edge putt. It's similar to what I'm saying with like my full shots, right? Is that I don't just trust myself to hit the putt. I feel like I have to put a perfect stroke on it. So I'm concentrating so much on getting it exiting left. Like almost an afterthought. Like I'm almost just like, oh yeah, you nailed that. Oh fuck, but you are, you've raffled it. Surely your stroke's good enough at the moment, right? Well, because, but then I feel like it's good enough because I'm concentrating on that. Do you know what I mean? Well, all, all you're concentrating is keeping a tight left, left armpit, right? Is that not what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Right, so that's, gonna, that's that done. So you've got your setup done. So now you need to concentrate on. So get set up, get your putter in the right spot, tighten up the left armpit, and then concentrate purely on speed, speed of the stroke. Better. Once you're aimed, Look, I said this, and I, I was a streaky putter at best, but sometimes decent. And I have no idea where I'm aiming. Genuinely, not a clue. Right, because I've got one of these heads that points off to the side. So I kind of, hopefully, I'm pointing in the right spot. And then, for me, it's because I don't know where I'm aiming, because my eyes are at like that angle, I purely concentrate on, on the pace of the stroke. So the pace I'm going to hit the ball. So that's all you need to worry about. Once you're lined up, it's just pace. Pace dictates the line anyway, doesn't it? I mean... Everyone goes on about you need both to be right, but if you ain't got the pace right, you're, you're scunnered. It's golf shot, man. Oh, go. So you do it, do a proper practice swing. What's that? That's not a proper practice swing. Oh, you chopper. Very good. Superb. See, I've got a feel. You're mugged.